In the following lecture, we'll be discussing management of cervical spine injuries, um, and this centers on immobilization. Uh, so this is something that all first responders should be comfortable with. Namaste. In this lecture, we will be talking about injury to the cervical spine, the part of the spine that runs the length of the neck. Injury to this region is important because of the underlying anatomy of the cervical spine, which includes the vertebral bones and the spinal cord. Damage to either of these important structures places the patient at an increased risk of paralysis and death. Most importantly, as the first responder, you have the ability to minimize this risk by properly immobilizing the patient. Let's talk about this in more detail. Traumatic injury to the cervical spine or the C-spine is a very serious matter. Again, the cervical spine is the region of the spine that spans the length of the neck. This can result, uh, injury to this area can result in severe permanent disability if the, the underlying spinal cord is damaged. So the goal of first responders is to recognize C-spine injury and to prevent further insult by immobilizing the region. The tricky aspect of cervical spine injury, uh, cervical spine injuries, is that they are not readily apparent. So when in doubt, it's best to immobilize them. Um, following our situation, um, in which one should suspect C-spine injury, if there is serious trauma to the upper body, head, face, or neck, with or without visible soft tissue injury, if there is paralysis of the extremities, if the patient is complaining of back or neck pain with or without movement and if there's tenderness along the spine or deformity of the spine. The following are mechanisms of injury um, that are commonly associated with C-spine injury. Moderate to high-speed motor vehicle collisions lead to whiplash that can lead to um, cervical spine injuries, blunt uh, impact to the head or neck, or falls from three times the patient's height, such as in sports injuries, shallow water diving, or ejection from motor vehicles. Um, are also very commonly associated with C-spine injuries. Other causes include explosions or penetrating wounds near the head or neck region. When assessing responsive patients, first responders should begin by asking a series of questions such as where it hurts, if the patients can move their hands and feet, and if there's any tingling or numbness in the hands and feet. Um, again, this can be brought about by slight pricking by, pin, uh, by a pin. Again, uh, they should then proceed to inspect for injury, then palpate the spine for tenderness and deformity and assess spring. When assessing unresponsive patients, first responders should determine the mechanism of injury from bystanders or other witnesses. And if there are no bystanders, then they should assume C-spine injury. They should then proceed to assess the, assess the airway and then for breathing and circulation and address any immediate life-threatening problems and they should inspect for soft tissue uh, injury on the face, head, neck, or spine, and then palpate the spine for tenderness and deformity. Management centers on immobilization. So um, first responders should apply uh, manual stabilization of the head and neck immediately upon contact with the patient. They should then assess airway, breathing, and circulation and use the jaw thrust maneuver instead of the, ch the head tilt uh, chin lift maneuver um, to open the airway as, this, um, as the jaw thrust doesn't involve as much movement of the head or neck region. A cervical collar should be applied to immobilize the neck and then patients should be uh, secured on a backboard. A cervical collar is used to immobilize the neck region. And application requires the use of two rescuers. So when a patient is seated or in a standing position, one rescuer manually stabilizes the head or neck from behind the patient. And another rescuer places the front part of the collar, ensuring that the bottom um, rests on uh, firmly against the patient's clavicles, and then secures it from behind. And at the end, it should be ensured that the collar supports the lower jaw. Manual stabilization should be applied throughout the pro process and continued until a patient is secured to a backboard. And here's a video of how it should be applied.
if a cervical collar is not readily available on the field, um, one can use a towel or a thick bed sheet and wrap it around the neck uh, and then secure it with tape. Again, it, sh uh, it should be ensured that the lower jaw of the patient is supported and manual stabilization is always required. If the patient is in a lying position, then one rescuer should kneel at the patient's head and manually stabilize the head and neck while the other rescuer kneels at the side of the patient and slides the cervical collar underneath the patient's head first um, and then secures it from the front um, so that it rests on the collarbones and supports the lower jaw. Again, manual stabilization should be continued until the patient is placed on the backboard. Here's a picture of a long spine board that is used um, to secure patients with suspected spinal injuries. If a spine board is not available, one can use a door or something of that nature as well. So when securing patients to, backboards, um, uh, to a backboard, uh, this requires at least three rescuers. One rescuer should always be maintaining manual stabilization of the head and neck. When a patient is standing, um, the other two rescuers should maneuver the backboard um, in between the patient and the rescuer who is maintaining manual stabilization. And then all three should work in, in tandem to bring the patient to the floor. And then the patient should be secured using bandages or strips of cloth um, at various points along the length of their body. When a patient is lying, um, the log roll maneuver should be used to secure them to a backboard um, and to place and secure them on a backboard. Um, again, the key is to move all regions of the, um, uh, of the patient in, uh, as a unit. Again, one rescuer is always maintaining manual stabilization of the head and neck, and it is on the count of this rescuer that the other two rescuers uh, reposition the patient. Motorcycle accidents are very common as well, and so first responders should be comfortable with uh, learning how to, with, with removing helmets um, safely. One rescuer should be positioned at the top of the patient's head and maintain manual stabilization using two hands to keep the helmet stable and the fingers to keep the lower jaw stable. Another rescuer should remove this chin strap and then place one hand underneath the patient's lower jaw and the other behind the neck to stabilize C-spine. While the second rescuer holds uh, the patient's head steady, the other can release manual stabilization and remove the helmet.
So communication is key in pre-hospital trauma management. First responders should always communicate um, several points to subsequent care, uh, care providers. And these include the mechanism of injury, the status of the vital signs of the patient, so the airway, uh, airway breathing and circulation, the status of motion and sensation, and the vents during transit. So what were the progression of injuries, what um, interventions did first responders perform, and what were the outcomes of these interventions. Again, to summarize, cervical spine injuries are incredibly dangerous and they can lead to permanent disability. And so extreme care must be taken to minimize further damage. First responders should be able to recognize the signs and symptoms of C-spine injury. And management really centers on immobilization using uh, manual stabilization, uh, cervical collar, and securing the patient to a backboard. Um, rapid transport of these patients is key as effective treatment can only be offered in a hospital setting. I hope you have found this information helpful. Now it is time for you to practice these skills so that you will be better prepared in an emergency situation. Please feel free to ask additional questions. Thank you. Daniela. Thank you for your time.